Hey there, it's Ash from Elementor. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the video widget. The video widget allows you to embed a video on any page of your website, either from an external source or from a self-hosted file. There are many great features included with the video widget, and depending on the source of your video, you will see slightly different customization options, so we'll be sure to go over them all. First of all, we'll create an embedded YouTube video, which when selected opens up a lightbox pop-up. We'll start by removing our existing video. Now let's search for the video widget and drop it into position. Under Source, you'll see that you are able to choose from a selection of video sources. We'll set YouTube for now and revisit the other options soon. Link is where we'll paste our YouTube video URL. To do this, switch over to the uploaded video on YouTube and locate the Share button. Selecting this will generate the link you require. Select Copy and head back to the editor. Paste your copied link into the field and your video will now appear. Start and End Time allows you to define complete control over when your video starts and stops. For example, you may want to set the video to start from 10 seconds in and then finish at the 2 minute mark. To do this, simply enter these values in seconds. We'll leave both of these blank as we would like our full video to play. Under Video Options, we can set multiple settings on how we would like the video to behave. Please note that depending on your chosen source, you will see slightly different options here. Selecting Autoplay will open up an additional option where you can specify if you would like your video to autoplay on mobile devices as well. We'll leave these both off. Mute will switch off the audio for your video. We'll leave this as No. Loop will continuously play your video on repeat. Again, we'll leave this as No. Player controls allow you to decide if you would like the video controls to be displayed for your viewers. By enabling this option, you can also choose if you would like modest branding enabled as well. This will remove the YouTube logo from the player controls. We'll set player controls to show and modest branding to yes. And if you would like to ensure that YouTube doesn't store information about your visitors unless they play the video, be sure to enable that option here. Lazy Load replaces the video embed code with a static image. The video is only loaded when the user clicks onto the image. This helps to speed up the initial page load time. If you would like faster load times on pages that embed videos, Lazy Load is a good option to enable, so we'll set this as yes. And the final option we see here allows us to control what content is displayed at the end of our video. We can choose from the current video channel or any video. We'll set this as current video channel. Now that we have configured our video options, let's move over to the image overlay toggle. By enabling this option, we can control the image which is placed on top of our video. We've uploaded a screenshot from our video and this is what we'll use as the image overlay. Ensure you select an appropriate image size for optimal loading times. The final two options here allow us to display a play icon and also enable the lightbox pop-up. Let's set these both to yes and switch over to the style tab to configure these. Before we move on to the play icon and lightbox settings, we can amend the aspect ratio if required and also apply a CSS filter. We'll leave these both as default, but be sure to experiment with these on your own videos. Under the play icon settings, we can set a color, size and shadow effect. Choose a color using the global color options or via a manual selection. Set the size using the slider or by simply entering a value. These values can also be changed by device, giving you full control on how the play button appears on different screen sizes. And experiment with the shadow settings to really make your button pop. Now switch to the lightbox toggle. As you can see, when we select our video, the lightbox pop-up appears. We can control many aspects here, including the background color, content width, and animation. All colour options can be set using the global styles or via a manual selection. Let's set the background colour, UI colour and UI hover colour. The UI colours control the close icon located in the top right hand corner. Content width will set to 80% which looks great for our video. 
and the content position will leave a center, but as you can see, you can move this up to the top if required. The final option for our YouTube video is to set the animation for our light box. We'll set ours to fade in for a nice subtle effect. And there we have it, our YouTube video is now complete and ready for the world to see. Let's move on to a Vimeo video next. Let's delete the YouTube video and drop in a new blank video widget. Under Source, we'll choose Vimeo. And now if you switch over to your Vimeo hosted video, locate the Share button and copy the link URL. Now back in the editor, paste the URL into the link field. As you can see, the Vimeo options are slightly different to the YouTube options, so we'll go over the differences. First of all, you can specify a start time. Next, we can enable autoplay, as well as autoplay on mobile devices. We can set the video to mute and also to loop if required. And next, we see some additional Vimeo specific options. By default, the title, portrait, and byline all show. But we can disable these options, and as you can see, these elements no longer appear on our video. The final Vimeo specific option we see is the control color field. If you enter a color here, you will see that several elements of the Vimeo interface change color and allow you to further match the video with the style of your website. We'll leave the image overlay as off, as these options are the same as what we explored with the YouTube video. And this concludes our Vimeo configuration, and we're now ready to move on to the Daily Motion hosted video options. Again, let's delete the widget and add in a new blank one. Select Daily Motion under Source, and now switch over to your Daily Motion hosted video. Copy the share link and paste it into your editor. Start time will leave as blank again, as we would like our video to play from the start. Enabling autoplay opens up the play on mobile option here as well. Mute will leave as no. Player controls let you switch the video player controls on and off. We'll leave these on for our video. And video info defines whether or not the title and uploader is shown. Moving on, we can toggle the daily motion logo on and off. And finally, we can set the color of the controls to match the style of the website. Let's right click our video and reset the styles. Our final source option is self hosted. With this option enabled, we can use a video which has been uploaded to the media library or by entering an external URL. We'll choose a video we've uploaded to our media library. And as you can see, we have start and end time options as well as the standard autoplay, autoplay on mobile, mute, and loop options. We can switch off the player controls and also enable a download button if required. The final option here is to set a poster for our video. This will display an image until the video has loaded, providing a better experience for your website visitors. And there we have it. You now know how to embed and style a video into your website using a self-hosted video or from an external source like YouTube, Vimeo, or Dailymotion. Thank you for watching this video. Please comment below with any questions that you may have about the video widget, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.